There are a range of different feedstocks and really anything you can imagine that is an organic residue or waste stream um, can be used to produce these liquid fuels for all of those sectors, heavy haulage, aviation, mm. mining, agriculture. If it's such a good answer then, what, what, what's happening? What's missing right now? We've got fuel emission standards which are slowly looking like they'll, they'll change and have an impact. Is that sort of missing element here? No, well, I think, I mean, the government uh, inherited, needed to do quite a bit of catch up on energy policy when they came into play. So there was a lot of focus that has been on the decarbonisation and the enabling of our electricity sector to be able to decarbonise that. What we need the government to do now is to, is to really have a parallel approach of decarbonising our liquid fuel sector at the same time. We shouldn't wait to get electricity done and then move on to the other sectors. Is liquid... that subsidies that this comes down to? Look, money from the government? Or... Well, I mean, I think it's a, range of, it's a range of different solutions that are going to enable it. The, the recent announcement around $2 billion just, to two billion dollars for hydrogen was obviously a really welcome announcement for for progressing hydrogen deployment in Australia. Um, similarly, we need to have a similar approach for liquid fuels. It accounts for forty five percent of our energy mix. Liquid fuels. We we need to take a focus on actually really supporting these hard to abate sectors, achieving decarbonisation. Shane McKenzie, we've got to leave it there. Thanks for your time today. Thanks so much.